more likely to display the, the behavior you're bragging on. So that's what we want to do. We want to compliment kids who um, are befriending students who are being bullied or reporting bullying <laughs> incidents, um, uh, who receives positive consequences. Anybody. I mean, it could be an individual you're working with. It can be a small group, an entire class. If you see your entire class trying to include someone who has been excluded in the past, uh, be sure to compliment them for that, and that will likely continue. Uh, those are the behaviors we want to reinforce. Um, the types of positive consequences, it can be anything from just praise, verbal praise, pats on the back, special privileges. If you want to do something with your class, some kind of system. Um, those are, are just some things that we'll be talking about. Um, the thing that the book stresses about using positive consequences is that you use them quickly right there in the moment and you're consistent about giving that feedback. next slide anyway is about negative reinforcement. Unfortunately, the research also shows that with bullying, if you don't have negative consequences established, um, bullying is likely to continue uh, with your more aggressive students. So that's why positive consequences and long positive reinforcement is not going to cut it. Um, there are guidelines, of course, for the use of negative consequences. Um, we have to make sure that we give a consequence that kind of makes the bully a little bit uncomfortable, um, not um, give them something that they're going to actually enjoy, but it's got to be something quick and easy to use and um, appropriate for the age and personality of, of the individual kid. It'd be nice if the negative consequences could be logically related to the behavior that occurred, like if a bully broke something that belonged to somebody else, require them to replace it with a suggestion or some kind of compensation to that student that was bullied. Um, the types of negative consequences, first of all, the thing y'all use the most is a verbal reprimand. Um, and for some it works, for others, you know, it doesn't. But there can be other things like the kid talking with uh, principal, assistant principal, parents losing privileges. You do the silent lunch walking recess thing. Um, timeouts, the um, <coughs> book says, should be used um, kind of cautiously. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But they say to base the timeout on the age of the kid. Um, some kindergartners, for example, may only need five minutes being removed from the group. Um, others 15 to 20 as they get older. Um, for the more serious offenses, repeated offenses, you know, you referred them to me or John and it may end up being uh, time out for longer periods of time, half day or whole day. Um, but be sure when we're introducing this program to the kids in the fall that we talk about the negative consequences that will occur. So they'll know what will happen to those that still choose to participate in bullying. Will there, will there be set school-wide, like, okay, first time it happens, like everybody, every teacher does this certain thing, like? Uh, I think that's something we need to talk about, so it'll be consistent, consistent from yeah. class to class, yeah. I think that's real important. It's kind of brings me to my part. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we've talked about what it is and what we're doing. We've done, talked about the true files. We've talked about the rules. But now it's where the rubber meets the road. What do we do in the classroom? How is it going to look in the classroom? And that is the next piece of the puzzle. And it is probably the most important piece because this is where we make it stop. This is where we have control. 
This is where we are monitoring and we are checking, making sure we're covering those hot spots, making sure the rules are understood and being reinforced. This is where it hits the road. And we have a really short video we're going to show you in just, well, it's not short, it's like 20 minutes. We're going to show you in just a minute, but I want to show you a couple of things before we pull the video up. Classroom component, classroom level components. Remember, this is where we're going to make the difference. This is the most important element of this. And it's posting and enforcing school-wide rules against bullying. It's holding regular class meetings. And in our book, it talks about that um, the class meetings, the class roles, and role-playing are the most important components of this whole program. It says the purpose of these weekly or more frequently, if you choose, meetings <laughs> is to build a sense of class cohesion and community to teach the rules and co consequences of bullying and to help students understand their role in bullying situations and to address issues about bullying as they arise. I think the thing that really stands out to me about this program is everybody has a role. Everybody. All we hear about <laughs> is the bully and the victim. But there's so much more. It's all the bystanders that are sitting back thanking the Lord that it's not them being picked on today and praying that they can get off the playground before somebody realizes they're not being picked on. It's the kids who are standing by going, gosh, I really don't like the way that's going, but I really don't know what to do about it. Those are the kids that we're hoping this program will help us empower so they can step up and say, hey, no, we don't put up with that. And the whole concept of this program and the classroom level components is to teach those kids to enable themselves to stand up to the bully themselves, even if the person being bullied is not strong enough to do it, somebody is standing in the wings watching, and they are strong enough. So we've got to reach those kids, and that's what we're going to be showing. Um, Ms. Rash, if you can grab the, my technical assistants over there. Um, but the, this, it says, um, my notes that I have from this says this component is critical to the program's success <clears throat> and it's why so many teachers are participating in this. Without the classroom component piece, you will not see a change in bullying. Putting the bullying rules up on the wall, having consequences and, and praise, that's not going to work if you don't have all the classroom elements in place. So we're going to spend a lot of time in our discussions discussing things like Jesse brought up. What are going to be our consequences? What are going to be our rewards? What, how are we going to word the bullying rules? And like uh, Jennifer said, the first one's pretty much done for us. We don't have a lot of leeway. So this video will give us some insight into the classroom component. 